Our chief guest, Honorable Governor of Kerala, Justice Retired Sri B. Sadasivam, will now address the gathering. Sri Arjun Ram Mehwal, Honorable Minister of State for Finance and Corporate Affairs, and also former, uh, was an administrator. Origin is from uh, administrative side. I noted from his uh, visiting card, he's an uh, IAS officer. <laughs> Professor Krishnan Balasubramaniam, Dean IZ and SR. Dr. M. R. Madhavan, President, PRS uh, Legislative Research. Sri K. Srinivasan, Chairman, Prime Point Foundation, hero of this function, <laughs> all responsible for this function. <laughs> Dr. Sudarshan Badmanabhan, Associate Professor IIT Madras, Sri Madhi Susan Koshi, Sri Bhavanesh Diora, dear uh, respected award winners, my friends in media, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to address you after presenting Sunset Ratana Awards to nine parliamentarians who have strengthened our democracy through selfless service. I would like to begin by <laughs> congratulating all nine parliamentarians who have won the award today. Sri Sri Rang Appa Barne, Sri Rajiv Shankar Rao Sattva, Dr. Hina Gaik, Sri Sanjay Rao, Sri Dhananjay Bhima Rao Madik from Maharashtra, Sri Badruhari Mahadab from Odisha, Sri N.K. Prem Chandran, Sri K.N. Balagopal, Sri Madhi T.N. Seema from Kerala, deserve our wholehearted uh, appreciation for the honor they have received today. Before proceeding further on the topic, because uh, I was just listening uh, the words from the announcer, she mentioned several times about MP Lad Fund. No, I thought it is the occasion, my, how I am connected with the function, though the organizers invited me as a governor of Kerala, First, I claim I am a native of this state, and another is when the parliament, when the parliament introduced this MP Lad scheme, one of your colleague, Dr. Beam Singh, is a leader of Panther Party from Jammu and Kashmir, filed a Article 32 writ petition directly in the Supreme Court. Now, at that time, I was. Uh, very junior judge. I was sitting with the then Chief Justice K.G. Balakishnan in the first court. And uh, on his behalf, he engaged a very senior lawyer from Kerala, Mr. K.K. Venugopal. And he, Venugopal started arguing the case. Now, as a colleague of Chief Justice bench, I conveyed my feeling to the Honorable Chief Justice, Sir, this is, a, is going to be a tussle between Parliament and Judiciary. It, uh, it is going to be a judgment on the entire parliament uh, members and the legislative assemblies of all over India. Why not we refer it to the constitution bench so that five judges will heard? Uh, the Honorable Chief Justice readily agreed and he constituted a five judge bench. In, in that bench, I was a fourth member as per the seniority. And uh, Mr. Venugopal, in his usual uh, uh, style, he argued almost uh, for a uh, whole day. 3.30, he concluded his argument. Then on behalf of the Union of India, the then Attorney General appeared uh, and uh, finished his argument within half an hour. Four o'clock, uh, the court res I mean, com concluded this case. It is a practice in Supreme Court. The, all the judges who heard the matter have to go and sit in the senior judges' chamber and express their views then formulate uh, questions and uh, prepare a judgment. I'm telling you nothing wrong in disclosing. Almost all the four judges were against this fund because they said there is no constitutional provision. If you analyze the constitution, there is no such, everything should be rooted through proper budget and through budgetary provision only. Then uh, I am the lone member, maybe because of my uh, uh, ground reality. I come from, from a farming community, rural based. 
I explained to the honorable judges, sir, uh, though there is no specific article in the constitution which was framed in 1950, there are several miscellaneous provisions. Can anybody anticipate when a tsunami will come? When the Prime Minister or Chief Minister sanctioned thousands of crores, can we say it is not uh, through budget, etc.? So we can fit in in the miscellaneous provision. Not only that, I pointed out, apart from uh, the Attorney General's argument, there are several checks and bounds. The MP and MLA, they cannot go and uh, uh, start any scheme. It has to be approved by the district collector if it is within district by the commissioner within a corporation limit and several uh, um, um, uh, conditions are there after the execution all the details will be placed before the assembly or uh, parliament so when i convinced them when there are several checks and after all they are they, the elected members are answerable to the public not the judges you and i even i posed a question you and i visit our native place no one will come and complain on the other hand when the elected members visit their constituency they are answerable to the public so why not and i also said as a person hailing from remote village i am seeing several developments even my village road was laid mp fund only uh, I explained to them, uh, I explained, then they agreed. Then the uh, Chief Justice said, brother, since you know more about uh, than us, why don't you prepare this judgment? This judgment was prepared by me. All, all the four judges approved this. It is a 77-page judgment. Actually, on the same evening, I summoned the Lok Sabha Secretary who is Mr. Viswanathan, he is from Tamil Nadu. I asked him to bring all the background details for passing this scheme. Then I mentioned everything. In that I mentioned actually after delivery of the judgment, I received several letters from members of parliament appreciating their view, appreciating their stand. That is one aspect. That's why I said I have more connection with the elected government. And uh, if you analyze my judgment from 8 to 96, when I became a judge of the Madras High Court, then uh, Punjab and Haryana, then nine years in Supreme Court, I always, uh, I, I always recognize the out of three pillars, the parliament elected members have a more responsibility than judiciary. That is my view. So long as they proceed within their boundary line, it is not possible for any court to encroach their jurisdiction or interfere. If you verify my judgment, either a reliant judgment or anything, I always uh, encourage public sector undertakings. That's why in that uh, judgment I mentioned, though my colleagues have uh, cautioned me, uh, I said uh, these assets, these, uh, na uh, these natural assets belong to our people. We have a well-established public sectors. Why not we exploit these assets uh, uh, through this public sector so that the profit will go to the public? But unfortunately, the successive governments are not adhering to this. Slowly, one by one, are going from the hand of government to other hands. That is the policy of the government. Just I am uh, uh, informing this gathering. Then coming to our uh, today's function, I also compliment the uh, Prime Point Foundation and its e-magazine presents on the interest it has been showing in recognizing the contributions of parliamentarians since 2009. I understand that this noble gesture of the foundation was inspired by the words of our former president, late Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who had made a a tele address to the first edition of the award ceremony from Delhi in 2010 and even devoted a chapter for this award in his last book, A Manifesto for Change. It is also good to know that the selection process for this award was carried out by a jury comprising three eminent parliamentarians, namely Sri Anandarao Adasul. Sri Hansaraj Ji Ahir and Sri Arjun Ram Mehwal. 
their choice of awardees can only be perfect considering their long experience as outstanding parliamentarians and as winners of the Sansad Maharatna Award for 2015. Of the nine award-winning parliamentarians, six are from 16th Lok Sabha and three from Rajya Sabha and they belong to different political parties. I feel that it would be unfair not to mention a word or two about the contribution of each person since there is something special with each one of them. For instance, Sri Sri Rang Barney's career exemplifies the steady progress of a political figure from the position of a corporator in municipal corporation to the level of an effective parliamentarian. <laughs> Sri Rajiv Shankar Rao Sattva has a parliament attendance record of 88%, which is higher than the national average and has asked 745 questions, which is the fifth highest. <laughs> Ms. Hina Hevit is a doctor uh, and one of the youngest members of parliament who has grown up seeing political activity uh, since childhood, uh, since her father too was in politics. Sri Dhananjay Bhimara Madhik stands out as an active figure who has raised 785 questions in parliament. Sri Bardihari Mahabat, who is the leader of his party in parliament, has an attendance record of 93%. And Sri N.K. Premchandran, parliamentarian from Kerala, is well known as a former minister who enjoys huge popular support despite belonging to a small party. Among the members of the Rajya Sabha, we have Sri Sanjay Rao, who has also been serving as the executive editor of his party's newspaper. Sri K.N. Balagopal, who hails from Kerala has been active in politics right from student days, heading student and youth organizations at the national level. And finally, Dr. T. N. Seema, who holds a doctorate in Malayalam language and literature, is now heading a mission in Kerala to brighten the prospects of organic farming. Now, I had an opportunity to participate several functions in Kerala. Even last week also we attended, we selected a best farmer in Kerala, farmers in Kerala, various type of farmers through a leading uh, television channel. I must also compliment the Delhi-based PRS legislative research which closely monitored the performance of all the members of parliament and released the data of their individual performance for selection which was based on the participation of debates, raising questions, introduction of private members' bill, bills, and attendance in house and committee meetings, usage of members of parliament, local area development scheme, etc. As we all know, the word parliament originated from the French word parler, which implied the act of speaking. The parliament is a place to talk about or discuss matters that concern the people and their lives. Quite often we see parliamentarians actively advocating or opposing some issues or causes and it is not rare to see the discussions turning loud, noisy and even violent. Every parliamentarian is driven by faith that his voice is the voice of the people. As the famous political theorist and philosopher Edmund Burke observed, I quote, Parliament is not a congress of ambassadors from different hostile and hostile interests. It is a deliberate assembly of one nation with one interest. 
just for um, in a very humble way, I'm I'm conveying uh, my views. Now I had an occasion. Now that the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha proceedings are lively, telecasted to the nation, everybody is watching your performance. Even if you have a small rest, it will be seen by oh, the cameras will be shown only your figure. The entire country is being watched. So out of uh, on seeing many noisy scenes, particularly in uh, Rajya Sabha, members, honourable members coming to the well of the house and blocking the presiding officer. One day when the Honorable Vice President stayed uh, in Rajabhavan at Kerala for two days, I had an occasion to move with him for those two days. I raised this question. Sir, is it not possible to control the members? I cited several instances how we deal uh, the advocates and litigants in court. I will explain later. <laughs> then uh, the Vice President, Honorable Vice President said, Sir, the members of Rajya Sabha are elders and uh, there are certain procedure even for evicting them from house. The noisy members cannot be lightly thrown out or evicted. There are number of procedures he pointed out. And I realized the party, after knowing the party position, etc., I realized. But uh, only one information I am telling as a judge for nearly 19 years in two high courts and Supreme Court. In the Supreme Court, even now, um, uh, they are also the uh, leading lawyers. They uh, take our time for a small issue, even for 3 plus 3, 6, they argue one hour. <laughs> Maybe because their corporate client may be sitting, standing or sitting background. So, but uh, when we say, when the judges on the dais, uh, when we say that we are not in agreement with your argument and we hand, if we hands over uh, the case paper to our court master and when any judge says, sorry, then he has to resume his seat. When the judge says, sorry, the, the advocate, whoever may be, uh, whatever fees he received, he has to sit down and uh, resume his other work. That is the uh, discipline as far as Supreme Court is concerned we are maintaining. Otherwise, it is very difficult. It is only one court, nearly 31 judges uh, for all over India. I don't know whether that kind of firmness can be enforced uh, in Parliament. Uh, and coming to our subject, uh, however, society holds uh, different views about politics and parliamentarians. People who are not aware of the significance of parliamentary procedure tend to criticize long discussions without realizing that the nation derives its policies through these deliberations. Though democracy allows a space for dissent, we have reached a stage where dissent is viewed as unpardonable and is even used against people. Hence, it is worthwhile to recall our Honorable Rastrapati Ji's recent remark, our present president's remark about need to recognize the argumentative Indian instead of intolerant Indian. I feel that our parliamentarians should volunteer to foster healthier and more constructive debates in society by strongly correcting the pessimistic trends in our political discourses. A parliamentarian fulfills the most significant duty of leading the nation building activity in any democracy. With the introduction of this mp lad scheme, every member now gets the added responsibility of directly ensuring development in their constituency. As the author of the constitution bench, five judges of the Supreme Court of India who gave the verdict upholding the constitutional validity of the mp lad scheme, I have the personal satisfaction of having been party to the rise of new development culture in our country. As a person hailing from farming community, 
and originated from a remote village in Tamil Nadu. I am aware of the welfare measures being implemented by our MPs and MLAs in their constituencies. However, I would like to suggest that the developmental activities of MPs should give more impetus to projects that promote renewable energy in society. It would also be good if active atten attention of members turned to projects that would benefit groups like transgenders, scheduled caste, and scheduled tribes. In conclusion, I would say that the Sansad Ratna Awards would ultimately benefit our society. As such, recognition will encourage parliamentarians to think of more innovative development initiatives. I compliment Sri K. Srinivasan and Prime Point Foundation for taking initiative to conduct this function in a befitting manner. I greet everyone present here and wish them all the best. Thank you. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. I request Sri Arjun Ramegwal, Honorable Minister, to present a memento to Honorable Governor.